Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Raw Reaction Show. I'm your host, Glenn Thomas. As always, one-fourth of the wrestling marks of excellence, which you can find every Thursday night on Fox Sports Radio, 1340 AM and 96.9 FM. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, as well as YouTube. If you like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you don't miss any of our updates, whether it's our Raw Reaction Show, whether it's SmackDown, or it's our weekly podcast. Uh, this Monday Night Raw, we saw a Raw that did not have to compete against football. It wasn't it didn't compete against the Monday night um, the NFL didn't compete against the NCAA championship game so it was a Raw that was kind of uncontested and we wanted to see what kind of Raw would WWE put on and they gave us a decent show the show started off with Braun Strowman coming to the ring and basically saying that he is cleared to wrestle uh, that he, that no matter what happens that he's going to take on Brock Lesnar the Beast Incarnate at the Royal Rumble. Uh, Baron Corbin comes out and gives him some dialogue and says that he couldn't even last, uh, you know, five minutes with Brock Lesnar, that he couldn't do anything. So Braun Strowman chases Brock Lesnar. Braun Strowman chases Baron Corbin to the back. Go ahead and destroys the limousine with Vince McMahon. And we see an encounter between Braun Strowman and Vince McMahon. If you don't know the history behind this, a lot of dirt sheets have been reporting that Braun Strowman has got a lot of heat with Vince and that the WWE and the company is no longer uh, in support support of Braun Strowman well, the company is no longer behind Braun Strowman. Uh, and you saw a little bit of this tonight because Braun Strowman, after he destroyed the chairman's limousine, as he as he did looking for Baron Corbin, uh, Vince McMahon made the statement. He first fined Braun Strowman $100,000. And, and Braun, just like most kids do when their parents are talking to them, uh, did a little bit of back talk. He said, oh, so you want to continue to talk? You want to give us a back talk here? And guess what? I'm going to take you out of the Universal Championship picture and what the chairman did. Now to the surprise of many people that you will not see Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. A lot of fans didn't want to see this match anyway because they looked at uh, the match from the Crown Jewel pay-per-view and, and realized, you know what, this may not be the match that we want to see. We don't want to see Braun Strowman lose to Brock Lesnar yet again. Uh, so what can else can we do here in the WWE? Uh, Braun, like I said, Braun tipped the chairman's limousine over. In, in, a, in a rage or in a rant. How many more vehicles can we see Braun Strowman tip over? We saw an ambulance tip over. We saw uh, the truck. We now see a limousine. Come on, we got to keep this. We know the man is strong. We know that he's big. We know that he's muscular. Uh, by God, he is big and muscular, and we like it. But stop throwing. Come on, we can't keep showing his strength over and over again if you're not going to let this monster uh, become the world, the universal champion. But nonetheless, Braun Strowman was removed from the universal title pitcher by the chairman Brock Lesnar. I want to know your thoughts. Is this was a good move by the WWE? Did this excite you uh, to, as you watch Monday Night Raw to realize that Braun Strowman will not be in a universal title picture? Well, there will be somebody else, a new challenger, as you were, for the universal title from Brock from Brock Lesnar. Uh, we move on, and we had uh, Vince McMahon make the announcement that it will be several people. That you know, and several people came out and talked about why they should get a opportunity to face Brock Lesnar. John Cena came out and said, "Well, 20 years ago, uh, when when Stone Cold left, and when Brock Lesnar went to play football, and and The Rock went to go do movies, I was the only one here. You wanted people to be ruthless aggression." Uh, you know, gave us a little pitch there about why he should have an opportunity. And Vince gave an opportunity and another opportunity and another opportunity. Uh, and then, you know, my man Drew McIntyre, the one everyone wants to see a Universal Champion, came out there and said that he is ruthless aggression right now, that he is the man, that he is Mr. Intensity. Uh, Baron Corbin gave his pitch, which I really didn't understand why he gave a pitch. Uh, but nonetheless, Baron Corbin gave his pitch. And then Finn Balor comes out and gives his pitch with Vince McMahon, basically kind of insults Finn Balor, uh, saying that, you know, you're small and these guys are a lot of beasts, a lot of beef in the ring here. And I don't think you're able to take on uh, Brock Lesnar uh, and win. Now, let's be honest here. We all know that, Finn, that Vince likes Finn Balor and Finn Balor was the first universal champion here. This probably played for the fans that didn't know or did not understand or may not even remember that Finn Balor was the first universal champion uh, and that Vince did have support for Finn Balor but over the last couple of months we've seen Finn Balor uh, bounce, bounce around as not knowing what he wanted to do uh, whether it was red tight Finn Balor, blue tight Finn Balor or black tight Finn Balor Finn Balor with the um, you know, uh, supporting homosexuals, whatever Finn Balor it was, he kept bouncing around and could not really find a place uh, in the WWE for the last couple months. He bounced from 
Bray Wyatt to to whoever to Bobby Lashley to whoever else it may be, and just couldn't find a place. And now we have Finn Balor who's getting a push uh, as a viable contender for the Universal Championship. We saw Finn Balor get a lot of wins on Monday Night Raw heading into. 2019, closing out 2018, Finn Balor was on a hot was on a hot streak on a roll. So he pitched his idea to Vince McMahon, and basically Finn Balor was like, "Yo, I have I have a right to be here." But Jinder Mahal has something else to say. What we saw later on the night, Vince uh, Finn Balor versus Jinder Mahal, and the winner would be in a fatal four way that Vince McMahon made, and the winner of the fatal four way would take on Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. Uh, we also saw the appearance of Nikki Cross, the twisted sister herself. Nikki Cross comes out here and she is the tag team partner or the triple threat partner or the six man partner of Natalia and Bailey taking on the Riot Squad. Is it just me or what I've seen Nikki Cross being with the Riot Squad, not with Bailey in Natalia? To me, I think Nikki Cross fits in the Riot Squad, gives them a different type of a feel and it elevates their game. Love the Riot Squad here. Always love the Riot Squad, what they've been doing in the WWE. Uh, like to see them go a little bit further in the WWE and get more development and storylines and they might do so in the next couple of months uh, as WWE announced some big things on Monday Night Raw but we saw a lot of the competitors that WWE announced were coming finally make their way to Monday Night Raw and we found out here that they were not only any specific show but they just introduced we saw EC3 earlier uh, we end up seeing Heavy Machinery also on this show we saw Lacey Evans in the back if you watched it. But none of these people are on either Raw or SmackDown right now. Basically, it's a bidding war. They're trying their talent out on both shows. And whether Raw or SmackDown is going to pick them up, only time will tell as the announcers made it clearly. But in this match, uh, we saw that Nikki Cross, Bailey, and Natalya picked up the win here uh, over the Riot Squad. And I mentioned and I alluded to it. Maybe other things for the Riot Squad. We had a moment of bliss here uh, with special guest Paul Heyman, the advocate for the Beast Incarnate, who said it basically went down the line while all four competitors that, that were in the Fatal 4-Way really are not a match for the Beast Incarnate himself. Rock Lesnar, he said to Drew McIntyre, it will be your time, but your time is not now. Cena, you're basically kind of old and we can't do it. And Finn Balor, you're basically small. And Baron Corbin, well, you're no contest for the, you're not a contest for the beast but we saw the big announcement that alexa bliss made and i like the role that she's in she is a beautiful woman she is in a role uh, that wwe has put her in and which is really good right now until she gets cleared i love to see her back in the ring but the announcement of the women tag team titles uh have been announced that there will be uh, a new tag team champion well the first women's tag team champion in almost 30 years uh, will be crowned at the elimination chamber uh, and there will be three tag teams from Raw, three women teams from SmackDown, and they will battle out in the Elimination Chamber. And the winner, the winner, will be the new WWE Tag Team Champions. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. There will not be a specific brand that they're on, so there will not be a Ross Raw t Women's Tag Team Champion. There will not be a SmackDown Women's Tag Team Champion. They would just be WWE Women Tag Team Champions. We mentioned that a little bit early on the Wrestling Marks of Excellence, myself and, and the Wizard Nephew Corey, uh, that they would just be one. It makes sense where they're just one competitor. Like the designs of the belts. Uh, let me know what you think. Do you like the design of the tag team title, the women tag team titles here? Uh, I, I like those. They're really nice. They look good, look better than the men's tag team titles with the Satyrian guys on it. Oh, but here, the women's tag team's out. Hey, I also want to know who, right now, before teams are even named and, and, and put in the hat, we saw on Twitter that Sonya Deville has put her and Mandy Rose's name in the hat. We could see people from the Riot Squad. We could see uh, Sasha and Bailey. You could see Tamina uh, and, and Nia Jax, maybe. Uh, you could see maybe Ronda Rousey and uh, Natalya. We could see a lot of combinations of people uh, who could fight or vie for the tag team women's tag team titles at the elimination chamber it'll be very interesting to see uh what six pair of women uh, will definitely get into this competition uh but wwe good thing good for them uh in this evolution of women wrestling to be able to have that i remember back in the day the jumping bomb angels who were uh women tag team champions uh but nonetheless let's move on alexa bliss uh very good show here very very good good show with her in
Paul Heyman. Anytime Paul Heyman can get a mic, it is always, the ratings will always go up. But your thoughts here, who will become the new women's tag team champion? Please leave a comment uh, below. Uh, then we saw we saw a little bit Nia. We saw Ronda Rousey and Sasha Banks uh, take on uh, Nia Jax and Tamina here. Uh, the two women work well together. Sasha Banks picked up the win uh, with the bank statement on Tamina. And then the fireworks flew as Charlie interviewed both of them. Ronda Rousey basically saying that, hey, whatever happened at the Royal Rumble, you're going to lose, Sasha Banks. Uh, you can't beat me. I'm, I'm going to make you tap out. And, and Sasha took a little offense to this. I like the heel. Uh, hopefully she becomes a heel, Sasha Banks. I don't, didn't, the fan Sasha Banks or the baby face Sasha Banks has really uh, wore thin here. Sasha Banks from the NXT where she was the heel, where she was the boss, uh, was better. Now, we men, many of us mentioned on our show, uh, the Wrestling Marks of Excellence, which you hear every Thursday night, mentioned that Sasha Banks really doesn't do the boss uh, uh, as well as she should. There's other women in the company that are more believable as the boss. Uh, one in particular, Bianca Belair, is more... Uh, believable as a boss then Sasha Banks but Sasha Banks here showed a little bit of fire and showed up a little that she wasn't scared of Ronda Rousey uh, and they got into a little exchange between each other and have you noticed on this exchange as if you watched the show as they went up the ramp S Sasha Banks did something that you had to really look at she threw up the four horsemen sign the four horsewoman sign now if you really read into that and the WWE is pretty smart here and I'm gonna give you a little insight here Look as what what is taking place, and look what is building up. Ronda Rousey has already had an issue with Becky Lynch. Ronda Rousey has already had an issue with Charlotte Flair. Ronda Rousey now has an issue with Sasha Banks, who is the tag team partner of Bailey. I'm not a rocket science here, but she's already messed up three out of the four horsewomen, and maybe just maybe WWE is putting the seed into our minds that the four horsewomen will be taking on the four horsewomen. Yeah, the four horsewomen will be taking on the four horsewomen, whether it be Sasha Bailey and Charlotte, along with uh, Becky Lynch taking on Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler, Baszler, and her other two cohorts. Only time would tell uh, in here in the WWE, but nonetheless, I am looking forward to this match. WWE has a lot of faith in Sasha Banks, and they have enough faith in the Ronda Rousey skills to put them two in the ring with each other right now, and knowing that Sasha Banks will not embarrass uh, Ronda Rousey because Sasha Banks is a very good technician if you go back you don't believe me go back and watch some of the stuff that she put on in nxt with bailey and with charlotte then we move on to my my moment of the night i'm very excited about this i love uh bobby lashley almighty he's come a long way from the gimmick with uh the storyline with Sami Zayn and his uh sisters to where he's at right now leo rush adds a little bit of more intensity adds a little bit more excitement to the almighty bobby rush and these two guys right here do a very good job. Leo Rush is a talker. Like him or hate him, he puts butts in seats, and you may not like him. But Bobby Lashley had a triple threat match against Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins for the Intercontinental Championship. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, you guessed it right, my man, the almighty one, Bobby Lashley is your new Intercontinental Champion. Bobby Lashley becomes the new Intercontinental Champion on Monday Night Raw. He will. Dean Ambrose loses the Intercontinental Championship after having it for a little over a month. And Bobby Lashley is your new Intercontinental Champion. Good for WWE and good for Bobby Lashley. Hopefully this propels him and takes him to another level uh, here in the 2019. Hopefully eventually we'll see Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar somewhere in 2019. But nonetheless, Bobby Lashley is a champion. He's been a champion everywhere he went. If you don't realize and don't understand, Bobby Lashley was an ECW champion. Vince McMahon loved him. He was in the main event of WrestleMania just years ago where you saw Bobby Lashley take it on Umanga. And that was if the billionaire and, by, of course, the president, Donald Trump, was uh, uh, in Bobby Lashley's short, short, uh, corner. And Vince McMahon ended up losing his hair after the match when Bobby Lashley won. But nonetheless, Bobby Lashley is your new intercontinental champion. Him and Leo Rush are doing some great things. Love him or hate him. Once again, love him or hate him. The almighty Bobby Lashley is the new intercontinental champion. I think we saw the Fatal 4-Way match the other night where we saw Finn Balor actually finally get a pin on John Cena. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, you have it. Finn Balor will be taking on the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar 
at the Royal Rumble for the Universal Championship. Will this be the time that Finn Balor gets to beat up Brock Lesnar? Will Finn Balor become the Universal Champion? Do how many you want to see not only Finn Balor take on Brock Lesnar, but you want to see the you want to see mm, what's that I'm looking for? The Demon. You want to see the Demon take on Brock Lesnar. Will we have Demon Finn Balor or will we just have Finn Balor take on Brock Lesnar? Only time will tell. We have two weeks. We're two weeks away from the Royal Rumble held in Phoenix, Arizona. And will we see, once again, Finn Balor or the Demon? But at the end of this match, after the crew to grow on John Cena, Finn Balor gets to win. And... John Cena basically gives his approval to Finn Balor. Said Vince McMahon didn't think you were too big. Finn, Vince McMahon didn't believe in you, but these fans believed in you. And I, and if not nobody else, one other person believes in you now, and that is me. So we have Finn Balor, uh, who John Cena, who believes in Finn Balor, and Finn Balor will be taking on Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble once again. Uh, very good Monday Night Raw, very entertaining Monday Night Raw. We saw, as I mentioned, we saw some of the call ups. On Monday Night Raw, we saw Vince McMahon on Monday Night Raw. A solid Monday Night Raw, in my opinion. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, was it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Uh, was it? A, did you believe that it was a solid Monday Night Raw? Do you like the fact that Finn Balor is the number one contender for the Universal Championship? Leave your comments and thoughts below. Uh, once again, join us each and every Thursday night on Fox Sports Radio 1340 AM, 96.9 FM. I'm Glenn Thomas, and this was your Raw Reaction. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, as always, if you're not confirmed, consider yourself denied. End of story. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.